Hi everybody, my name is Arik and welcome to the uh, Leo season forecast where I'm going to talk about what's going on for Leo season 2023. There is a um, written out forecast that you can read and get your horoscope in there as well. But basically, we have a lot going on for Leo season 2023 and basically it's like we want to always be very mindful about the fiery energy of Leo because it's the second season of summer. So it's going from 20, uh, I'm sorry, July 23rd until Ju uh, August 23rd. That's exactly when Leo season is occurring. And we got like some interesting concepts to think about here. Leo season is about strength and love, your desires. There's also some energy of judgment that can be controlled through the energy of um, self-control. So that's very good to keep in mind because, you know, we're going to need it. It's that middle summer energy and Leo tends to represent the amount of self-control that, that we have. And so that's why it's something that we want to focus on throughout the whole Leo season because the, the level of self-control that, that is coming with self-responsibility is really like where we are mastering over our ego driven thoughts our low frequencies um, the actions that we have when we can really kind of be in that state of self-control that is through self-responsibility we can approach any situation with courage and any situation with confidence and you guys know if you can do something with courage or with confidence you can be entirely successful and that's what we have the opportunity for every leo season but as we know every year is a little bit different because we have different astrological transits so before we begin i want to align our energy um, with a with an energy balancing a really quick one that we can do uh, we're going to read off the mantra here and it's going to balance the right and left brain it's going to reset the the meridian system and the way that we do it is that we thump here three times on the thymus gland which is also going to activate our immune system and every time we thump we say ha so and we do that nine times but in three sets so we read off of here, we're going to do it together, and then we're going to thump here three times, like ha, 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 and we're going to do that three times three. So let's all do it together. One, two, three. I have love, faith, trust, gratitude, and courage. My life energy is high. I am in a state of love. Ha, 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 ha. Beautiful, wonderful. So now Leo is giving us that energy of courage, but it's also giving us that, that power of compassion and the, the love that has no conditions whatsoever. So rather than getting aggressive or trying to force things, uh, when we can be courageous, confident, loving without conditions, generous and compassionate, Leo is unlocking patience and stamina and the balance that we need to achieve our goals. Because the way that this works is that there's there's chi that moves throughout the, the universe and there's energy. And when we are, for example, compassionate rather than aggressive or when we're generous rather than greedy or that when we are... Um, allowing things to when we're being self-responsible rather than trying to force things to, to happen that force gives us the energy that we need to be in the right place um, having the the pure desires of accomplishing things and bringing healing to our actual physical body and I love it because Leo season for each and every one of us depending on where it's happening in your chart so please have a look where Leo is occurring in your birth chart by using either our workbook or our calculator. It's free. You can use it on zodiachacks.com. 
but basically that you can go into a state of uh, refinement where you start to kind of break things down, understand ideas, break them down into smaller ones, and then change anything that's not working. Change the recipe. Because Leo teaches us if we don't like something that we see in our reality, that we need to go back to the source, we need to go to the pattern, and from there we need to uh, change so that we can change the like the output, like what's being expressed. So I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. There's really a lot of good things there. Also, I do want to mention that it's a good idea to work with your progress chart during Leo season. So looking at how like the potential that you need to be living up to. I do offer progress chart reading, so you can send me a message or just book uh, online and we can look and see are you living up to your potential and how can you access the potential if you're not. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the transits that are going on this year for Leo season. All right, so there are a lot of transits that are occurring, but I wanted to just kind of pick out some major days where big things are happening. So as you can imagine, uh, Leo season begins on July 23rd, and that's there's a lot going on on that date. So not only will the sun be entering into Leo, beginning what's called Leo season, but it'll also see the day that this is the same day that Venus will be going retrograde in Leo. And this is kind of important because Venus going retrograde means that matters. So Venus is the planet of love. Retrograde means things are going backwards. So it's like love and things are being reviewed. Now, this happens every 18 months. And it only happens for about 40 days. So you can imagine it's a really important thing. So it's going to be from July 23rd until about September 3rd. And Venus will be going retrograde in the sign Leo. So this is, this is really big because we start Leo, Venus goes retrograde in Leo. And then there's this kind of intense square between uh, Pluto and the nodes. So the 23rd is already kind of a, a big day. Venus retrograde in Leo is a very, as I said, it's a unique day. It's a unique period, actually, that is when Venus, like, is money, love, beauty. It's, from our perspective on Earth, it's going backwards. So these things need to be kind of looked at and changed. So it's the supports, the, the, the exact same thing I was saying about Leo, that if we don't like something, we have to change it at the source. So this has to do specifically with the energy of love. So Venus is asking us to turn inward, prompting us to kind of reevaluate anything that we value, the connections that we have, like our love connections, also how we express affection, how we kind of communicate, how we express our appreciation. Venus rules over the throat, so it's about are we expressing ourselves, what are we saying, what are we not saying. Uh, the retrograde will emphasize the need for genuine, also self-love and authentic self-expression. So it's going to urge each and every one of us to kind of explore our creative talents, embrace our uniqueness with confidence and courage, because once again, we need to be able to do whatever it is that we do, we need to be able to do it confidently. So that's why I also suggest the Leo essential oil blend from Aurelia essential oils and with Venus retrograde, of course, the chakra five essential oil blend as well, just to help on the energy level with everything, because let me break down kind of like five or six things that are going to really come into light with the Venus retrograde because I do want to talk about this in depth because it only happens every 18 months. There will be a reevaluation of relationships. You guys know I talk a lot about relationships uh, in my classes and in my sessions, and there will be a reevaluation of it. 
So we're looking at what are the, the positions, what are the frameworks, what is the, the, what is the purpose of the relationship. It's time to kind of reassess our relationships, romantic, platonic, all of it. And it could also be, we see this a lot, that past issues during Venus retrograde, that they resurface, but they want to be resolved, okay? So we may find ourselves revisiting old connections or considering uh, rekindled past flames, maybe. Uh, it's a, really an opportunity to heal relationship wounds, also to set healthy boundaries, or also to cultivate a more genuine and loving connection, because Leo is a lot of loving energy. Um, the second point I wanted to bring up is that the self-love, the self-worth, Venus retrograde in Leo kind of highlights the importance of that self-love, recognizing your kind of worthiness within. So it encourages us to really celebrate our individuality, embracing your strengths, and letting go of self-doubt as much as you can, really loving what it is that you express. So uh, embracing uh, affirmations like the ones that we just did here can be really really helpful and then saying them out loud because Venus is the, is the throat so it wants to be spoken and then with that said there's a lot of opportunity for creativity uh, looking back and working on your creative things maybe making changes in your creative projects maybe you're designing whatever it is you're designing Leo uh, Leo is a lot, a lot about expression Venus is also that design um, it's, it's, it's really perfect time to, uh, if you feel drawn to explore your artistic perspectives and maybe kind of change things here and there. Um, and also Venus is a very nurturing planet as well. So it's about nurturing our creativity, finding unique ways to express ourselves really authentic, authentically because Venus and Leo retrograde, it's kind of like, well, where was I not really like dressing like myself, where was I not really expressing myself, where was this, where was I kind of mimicking somebody else, where was I not really 100% original. So this is going to be a very, uh, very helpful time as well. And also another point I want to bring up is the reflection of personal values. So there's a, there's a prompt with Venus retrograde for us to reflect on our values and what truly brings us joy what truly brings us fulfillment. So we once again have this period of introspection where we might question the material possessions um, or the external validations in the material world um, that we once were kind of looking for. But in Venus retrograde, maybe we're looking within and seeing, okay, I don't need outside validation. I can just... I feel validated because I'm doing what I love. I don't want to do something to be loved by others. I'm rather doing something that I love doing, which is a very strong, powerful way to, to handle this energy. Once again, through compassion, allowing that energy flow to flow through you as well. Okay, now also Venus retrograde is going to bring up past relationships, lessons, it literally could be like a past person or an unresolved relationship. Um, it could be issues that are resurfacing during the Venus retrograde in Leo. Um, it might bring up a little bit of nostalgia, but it's more important to remember the lessons that you've learned. Uh, maybe if you've hurt somebody, there can be a good time to do some atonements to kind of bring that, that, that pain away and to heal yourself and heal the other um, but it's kind of revisiting the past can reawaken things that maybe we have forgotten about but I don't want to suggest like that we are looking into the past and and having regrets and stuff like that but just rather committing to avoid repeating old patterns because remember you've changed the pattern or hopefully you can you'll be given the extra boost to, to change the pattern with the Venus and retrograde in Leo you don't want to like remake it. And then Venus retrograde in Leo is all about being vulnerable. Leo, of course, is very confident, but with Venus retrograding throughout Leo, it's kind of this invitation to be vulnerable, to show our authentic romantic side, uh, being open and deepening our connections and bringing about more meaningful, 
like meaningful and heartfelt relationships, which is, you know, sometimes very difficult to come by. Uh, being honest in the relationships, being a true person in a relationship rather than just, you know, being what you think the other person wants you to be, for example. So really, the, the Venus retrograde in Leo is a time for deep self-discovery, creative exploration, uh, reflection on the matters of the heart, embracing the lessons of this Venus retrograde can really kind of help you to cultivate more authentic relationships, enhancing self-love, expressing yourself with a greater passion and more confidence. So really anything that's lacking the passion, it's time to be reviewed. Uh, be gentle with yourself, be gentle with others during this kind of introspection of love as it's, offer, it's going to offer a really powerful opportunity for growth and transformation, especially when Venus goes direct uh, in the beginning of September. All right, so also uh, with the Pluto squaring off with the nodes, wow, so yeah, this is really a lot has to do with, uh, once again, being able to kind of push off and push forward. So it's like you're kicking off the wall and you're swimming forward as, as, as powerfully as you can. Um, I like it very much, you guys, because it's kind of like transformation of the past for a, a changed future, which is something that we, that we really need to, to, to work on. All right, so another powerful day of Leo season is August 1st. Now, of course, we have the full moon in Aquarius, and then we have some aspects with Mars, and once again with the south node and Jupiter. So this is going to signify a period of energy uh, with the moon, its emotions, and Aquarius, it's the humanity, but there's a lot of growth as well. So this is a transformational period. It's infusing us with powerful energies and opportunities for growth. So the, I will do a class on the full moon, but basically the full moon in Aquarius is the other side of the sun in Aquarius. I mean, I'm sorry, the other side of the sun in Leo. So it's an opposition energy, and there's a lot of tension between the Leo energy of self-expression, the individuality, the rulership, and the Aquarius moon of collective consciousness, humanitarian emotions, humanitarian ideals. So this full moon, there's going to be a lot of emotions between the individual and the collective, kind of like what I feel other people want and with what I want to actually do. So of course, there's a focus on community, socializing, connections, embracing our unique qualities. But the thing is, that Aquarius, even though it's very much into uh, groups and humanity, the problem is that it doesn't like, it's not so strong with one-on-one -on -one connections. So we have to kind of balance these two energies. And like I said, I will talk extensively about this in the full moon class. But basically, the full moon in Aquarius is, is giving us the ability to kind of step back from like our personal dramas and open our minds. It's kind of inviting us to kind of reflect on how we can contribute positively to society make a difference in our lives and others. And really, it's, a, it's a, the full moon for innovative thinking, open-mindedness, and seeing how we can work with others to bring more positive energy to others. On the same day, uh, we have a Mars and a node aspect. And this can bring some challenges, but also some karmic lessons. The south node is the the things, is kind of like our fate, and Mars is kind of triggering it a little bit. So the past patterns that we haven't yet uninstalled, the experiences, the traumas, the things that we just kind of allow things to happen. Mars wants to break things down. So there's going to be a huge breakdown of the old. So we're going to be asked to kind of undre um, undress and address any unresolved issues from the past and break down old patterns and release from limits and habits. It's a really good time to break habits. Let's, let, me, let me just put it that way. Mars can be a little bit impulsive. It can be a little bit aggressive. So be calm, meditate, 
use the energy to break free from any situation that's stuck, any situation where there's no progress. That is the most important thing with that because that's going to help you to grow. That's going to help you to move forward in your life. And then on the same day, we have an aspect between Mars and Jupiter. So we have Mars trying Jupiter. And it's again, it's another packed day that's going to make echoes and ripples throughout the cosmos. But it's, it's, a, it's, it's helping with the, the expansion, the growth, the abundance. There's, there's that assertiveness of Mars, but then there's that blessing energy of Jupiter. So we're getting a lot of enthusiasm and optimism to break down these old habits. And it's going to give us a lot of good energy for success and growth and achieving our goals. So we could like for a few days here, like feel a little bit more confident and inspired to take on new challenges, to kind of uh, venture into unfamiliar territories. But I think the key thing here is to maintain a balance between um, ambition and aspiration, allowing the, the expansiveness of Jupiter to kind of guide our, our, our Martian actions and to go into a fulfilling uh, direction, something that's really going to fulfill us and not just give us like a high and then like take take that energy away from us. We really want like long lasting fulfillment with that. And then of course with the full moon in Aquarius and the Mars energy going there, it's like this once again heightened emotions but a lot of potential for growth. So it's really time to step into our authentic selves as much as possible. Be true to yourself. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. If you want to do it, do it. At the same time, recognize the importance of the collective. So first yourself, then the collective, and then by being able to bring these energies together, we can kind of transform, release the past, and set forth on a path of empowerment and expansion, not only for ourselves, but for others with a higher purpose. And then you'll feel way more fulfilled in your life and that flow of life will be working through you. So once again, Leo season is giving us that energy of self-control that's coming with self-responsibility. And then we can upgrade from low frequency thoughts, like I said earlier. So th these transits are going to help us to do that. All right, August 7th, you see that the sun will be making an aspect to Jupiter. Um, it's another big day. And it's going to be also, once again, impacting the nodes. And so this is all about directing our growth and pushing forward, like activating destiny rather than flowing through with fate. And there's a big difference there. Like with fate, we don't really, we just throw things to the wind and just let things, have, let the pieces fall where they will. But where with destiny, we're kind of, we're approaching it with more organization. We're approaching it with more consciousness. We're approaching it with, with like, I can't control everything, but what can I do about it? What's the divine wisdom that I can get so that then I can know what are the actions that I should do? What is it that I should be doing? And this can be very, 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 very helpful. So we, of course, need to be able to listen to our inner voice, listen to our inner guidance, and know that it's something that wants to help us and not something that wants to harm us. And then on August 16th, we have the new moon in Leo. This is always a really big day, but on the same day, we have Sun square Uranus and Mars trine Uranus as well. So this is going to be a lot of innovation, a lot of unexpected changes, but also breakthroughs and new solutions are coming. If you've been waiting for something, that's all going to ride on that new moon energy, which is amazing because that's going to give us the opportunity to... Um, infuse the lunar cycle with this new groundbreaking energy. And then the last day I want to talk about is the 21st of August, right before we go into Virgo season, which is the last sign of summer. But then the, the, the north and south nodes are going direct again. Um, and then we have an interesting aspect between Venus and Mars. So this is kind of going to indicate renewed focus on our direction and once again, the opportunities for positive relationships and creativity. So there's a lot of there's a lot of emphasis of love. There's a lot of emphasis of creativity. There's a lot of emphasis of the path. So if you love your path, then you're in a good place. I think this is absolutely amazing. If you're in a good path, 
then you love your place. And then I just have to mention it because it'll be in Virgo season, but basically two days later on August 23rd, Mercury will be going retrograde. So that's technically in Virgo season, but just so that we know because we want to be on the proper path, we want to be going the proper way, and we want to be like as positive as we can. So these are just some of the highlights of Leo season. And of course, the importance of each day will depend on your birth chart, your individual circumstances, where Leo is ruling in your chart. Um, so keep in mind that astrology is a man-made belief system based on archetypes that's been structured. So we can hack all of this. Everything that I've said here can be hacked, can be changed. But the influences of, of these days and all the transits of Leo, they are going to vary from person to person. But something that we can all do is the, the Leo uh, sunlight meditation, which is available for the Zodiac hackers. And this is absolutely amazing because it helps us to kind of access the, the incredible energy that's available through the sunlight. It kind of helps you to, to invest the light in your Leo season and kind of project what it is that you want to see because like everything is working off of light and through light we're able to see things and with our ability to see things we're able to project. So the, the quantum solar meditation, we do it every month um, and like I said, it's for Zodiac hackers and what we do there is we kind of tell the universe what it is that we want to see throughout the, the particular season in question. So this is Leo season. So you have the unique opportunity every single month to tell the universe what you want to see in your life. So throughout the whole Leo season, you can kind of like like the, the, the meditation, I mean, you can transmit all of your intentions, your desires, all the light that you want the universe will send you based on your request. And so I've developed these protocols to help you send it out so that it comes back and then you can work with it deeper throughout the new moon and the full moon as well. So I love it because it changes every 30 days. There's a different frequency available in the cosmos, but we're not really tuned into it. So this visualization workshop, uh, it helps you to really kind of tune in to what is available, what is there and then you can project that out. And it's a monthly technique that allows you to really kind of reverse adverse requests as well and make space for new energies that really align with how you've changed. Because as you grow every month, you change and then your desires change, what you want changes, and you can also explore darker areas like that need to be changed, things that you need help working on. It's amazing. So. I highly suggest you know working with that, optimizing that energy as well. And it doesn't matter if you are an experienced uh, meditator or beginner meditator. It doesn't matter because the workshop working with the tarot helps you to kind of get in that right space. You're strengthened and you're being carried through it uh, just by listening. So you guys, this is the the forecast for. <laughs> Leo season, I think it's a really exciting time. Also, the 24th of July will also be a really big day, but I've talked about that in the three weeks of summer. So you can uh, you know, check that out there as well if you haven't already. But uh, I'm gonna suggest to keep a journal, write down what's going on every day, to reflect, express yourself. Um, recommended reading would be, of course, from the Zodiac Hacks book. You have the whole chapter there on Leo. It has a lot of information on how to hack Leo season, how to talk to Leos, um, how to express yourself, and then like the consciousness that's available as well. Because you know we all want to embrace our inner light, um, really create our, our our growth plans and follow through with them as well, and tap into that inner strength because we all deserve it uh, if we've earned it and we've worked for it. So. Here's to a wonderful season of refinement and, and breaking things down and understanding like what it is to really be like the, the king or queen of the, jung of the jungle. Okay, you guys, thank you so much. And if you haven't already signed up for the Zodiac Hackers membership where you can do the meditation, uh, then you can do so. I'll put some links down there. And if you guys are, are hackers watching this, then stay tuned for the meditation I will guide you through. Thank you. Bye-bye.